Hey guys, welcome back to part five of the CNC build videos, where we're gonna be installing all the electronics that are run through the gantry up to the servo motors and down inside where all the electronics are housed, cooled by a fan and protected by an air filter with some plexiglass on the front so we can see everything that's going inside and easy access to the monitor to show us our Mach 3 software. So the first thing I do is break down a sheet of 5 8 MDF. This is going to be the wall to separate the unused section of the lower shelf and the controls cabinet, which needs to be sealed off for proper airflow. The cross members that support the table actually run perpendicular to this piece, so I needed to mark out and notch out those areas. In order to mount this dividing piece, I'm going to use some scrap plywood, drill a bunch of pocket holes in it. These will then get glued and nailed on and then screwed in place when the divider is installed. As I maneuver this piece into place, you can see that I'm using a spacer block to ensure that every section is spaced equally. Back over at the table saw, I ripped down another sheet of 5 8 MDF. This is gonna be used to house the fan that cools the unit. Now I find the center, mark my circle, and then using a little trick I learned from John Heiss, I actually don't need to drill a hole to start my jigsaw. I just kind of plunge it in like that. The way I chose to mount this fan is just by taking the stock grill that comes with the fan and attaching it with a bunch of screws on either side of the cage. Now you see I had to notch out a few areas to make clearance for the inside. The outside cage gets mounted in the exact same way just to protect little fingers. Once the assembly is in place, it's just held down with four inch and a quarter screws. So the last thing to do was to just take the controller that controls the speed on and off and just kind of mount it to the back wall. This will later get plugged into a power strip. Back over at the table saw, I'm gonna rip down a few scrap pieces of pine. The wider piece of scrap pine is for the thickness of the air filter. The smaller piece is just an edge to keep it in place. So I'm gonna install this piece on the bottom and on the top, there's just gonna be a piece attached to the torsion box top. This will keep the right side free and allow me to slide new filters in and out. Using some more of that 5 8 MDF, I've ripped down a small section which is going to be used as the shelf to house all the electronics. When cross-cutting to final length, I have a small scrap that I cut nearly in half to add as braces for the shelf to attach at both sides of the table. This is simply glued and then a few brad nails hold it in place. With the shelf now complete, I can start laying out all the electronics. Everything gets simply screwed down to the board, making sure to not over tighten anything. So in green and black, what we see is the four driver boards. In blue, we see in the middle, that's the controller which plugs into the driver boards as well as the computer. On the right in gray, we have the 24 volt power supply. The control board, I simply used a bunch of nuts as spacers to stand it up off the bottom, as I thought a little bit of airflow underneath couldn't hurt. The power supply also received a few spacer blocks just to increase airflow underneath the unit. I then temporarily hooked up a cheater cord providing 120 volts to the unit, which will then convert it down to 24 volts. I use a meter to verify these results. In order to begin wiring these up, I first needed to decide which driver boards needed to be 
x, y, the cloned version of y, otherwise known as a, and z axis. Each of the driver boards needs 24 volts from the supply, which I use 16 gauge speaker wire to provide. The main control board does not need 24 volts. It uses a double-ended male USB-A to connect and get power from your computer. Lastly, I mounted and tested the relay, which is going to control the spindle on-off function. All the electronics, including the computer, are mounted underneath, so I need access. So I created a door out of Lexan using just a hinge and a piece of scrap Lexan. Once the Lexan was cut to final size, I could then lay the hinge where it needs to go and using a self-centering bit drill out all the holes. I then needed to mark locations for new holes as the old holes were the exact same spot as the ones attached to the Lexan. And this isn't going to work when the hinges are closed, they're going to interfere with each other, so everything needed to be offset. The hinge gets attached to the Lexan with a simple 832 nuts and bolts. I then whipped up one of my patented trapezoidal handles which I put on all of my shop furniture and attached it to the front with two holes to act as a handle to open and close the door. With the door now installed and fully functional, I take a scrap piece of plywood, rip it down to about an inch and a half wide and the proper length to fit between the shelf and the top. This is going to be used to add a window to the right of the door as the door does not stretch across the entire front. In order to power everything, I'm going to be using a power bar with a surge arrestor and an on-off switch. So to get the plug out of the unit, I needed to drill a big hole in the bottom to run it outside. The power bar was then screwed down so it didn't move. Using a couple spacer blocks at the same height on both sides, I can then drop in the shelf with all the electronics in it. Once the shelf was seated properly, I drove in two screws on either side, one into the leg, one into the dividing wall. A total of six things get plugged into the power bar. The fan, the computer, the computer monitor, the 12 volt adapter for the relay coil, the 24 volt DC power supply, and the power from the router which goes through the relay. I then installed four magnet latches all around the door in order to keep the door closed. I then bent up and drilled a hole in a scrap piece of aluminum and mounted my e-stop push button. I then taped together all the cables that needed to go up to the gantry and started fishing them through the upper drag chain. I then took a scrap piece of pine and then started drilling some holes through it. This is going to be then ripped down and these will be used as clamps to hold all my cables in place. As I attach a clamp on the front of the z-axis and the top part that doesn't move, I'm sure to leave a little loop of wire for movement. So the cables I ran to each servo are actually 8 conductor 22 gauge. I decided to parallel up my conductors in order to lessen the voltage drop. All the connections are soldered and heat shrunk together. Using my heat gun with this blade worked, but it was a pain in the ass, so I took it off and decided the traditional way works fine. <laughs> 
After the connections were all made, I simply pulled the slack back through the drag chain. As you can see, the wires are just kind of hanging out the back right now, and I want them to come through the side of the gantry. So using a series of holes and rocking my drill bit back and forth, I created a slot for all the cables to pass through. After pulling all the cables one at a time through the top, I can then start pulling them one at a time through the lower drag chain, which will eventually make their way into the control cabinet. I made up a few notched out pieces for spacing away and holding the cables in place. I drilled a couple holes through the side of the gantry underneath the main beam where the two motor cables were going to come for the Y-axis. So once everything is clamped in place, I added a few pieces of electrical tape to just hold everything together. And now you can see under the main beam where those little clamps are that hold the cables in place. So in order to get all the cables inside the control cabinet, I chose to drill a hole through the leg and through the bottom of the drag chain at a certain point to run all the cables inside. Another notched out piece clamps all the cables down and some silicone fills in the gaps. The last step in this project is to simply wire everything up.